Okay. So today's review lecturer is Justin David from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. And Justin will be talking about modular forms and black holes and equals to four straight theories. Thank you. Okay, thanks for the invitation. Uh, thanks for the organizers to give me the opportunity to come here. It, actually, I meet uh, a lot of people which I haven't met uh, before COVID. I mean, you know, this is like after a long time, I'm meeting many people and it's nice uh, and new people, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll be talking about this topic. Uh, they've worked in the past and, you know, uh, and it's in line with this meeting. And, um, and let's see, how, I mean, I've not been actively working on it now, but still, let's see how it goes. And, so uh, let me introduce the topic first. Uh, and as all of you here know, I mean, all of you are experts. So uh, a long-standing puzzle in gravi quantum gravity is to provide a microscopic understanding of black hole entropy. And we know from a couple of days ago, even uh, uh, Robert emphasized that uh, in a two derivative Einstein uh, gravity, uh, there's a hawking beckenstein formula. Uh, there's an entropy associated with a black hole, uh, which is proportional to the area. Uh, and uh, here's the formula. Uh, and the microscopic description of the black hole would mean that we have a statistical understanding of the black uh, Bekenstein and Coffee formula. That means there is some quantum system where you count uh, the log of the degeneracy, and then you know it somehow agrees with the geometric formula of the area. Now, in the framework of string theory, which is what we are going to focus on, uh, there exists extremal supersymmetric black holes. Uh, which I've made a microscopic description, and this would be the focus of the talk. And for extremal black holes, the mass as well as the area, they are all functions of the charges. Uh, and therefore, the entropy would be a function of the charges. Uh, and, uh, and then, therefore, a microscopic description would allow us to count this degeneracy as a function of these charges. And, uh, you know, under some approximations like the large charge limit. Uh, we would like it to agree with this. I mean, if, it, if you have done a good job, then it should agree with this uh, uh, geometric formula. Uh, the geometric formula is also expressed as charges because it's an external uh, black hole. Now, uh, there are some leading corrections which we know uh, exist for the geometric formula uh, given by the refinement of Walt. And these occur in higher derivative theories of gravity. And, uh, and if we have Sort of our microscopic description is very good, uh, very accurately. The subleading corrections also should agree uh, with the large charge expansion in the microscopic side. Mm -hmm. There is a degeneracy formula and there is a large charge expansion of that, and we should get uh, them to agree. Uh, and in this talk, we'll focus on a class of models, uh, class of models of this kind, <laughs> class of models of this kind. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is uh, called, uh, you know, which I will describe a little bit, uh, N equals 4 uh, plus model to uh, the other side of it. So, uh, which is basically N equals 4, uh, which has N equals 4 supersymmetry. And the canonical example of this is the heterotic on T6, uh, which is dual to tag 2 on T3. I mean, maybe some, maybe the new, I don't know, all of the us are quite old, actually. I mean, these duality is not, not familiar with many people uh, in the current generation, but uh, this is a very well-known duality between heterotic on P6, which has four supersymmetry uh, and it equals four, uh, and it's dual to tag two on K3. So this is a canonical example, uh, which we will have, and we will have a class of examples related to this. Now, uh, the models, uh, after this canonical models, uh, there are certain obifold of this, which still preserve n equals four supersymmetry, but reduce the number of uh, U1 charges, uh, basically the number of electric or magnetic charges you can have. And, uh, and these are all the classes of models which we will deal with uh, in this talk. Uh, and each of these theories, there are quarter BPF states. And uh, these states have both electric and magnetic charges. And uh, in the large charge limits, uh, these states can be identified with black holes. And these are the states that we are trying to uh, perform a counting. Uh, and the supersymmetric index, which counts these quarter, I will describe all this a little later, this is just a brief preview, uh, which counts these quarter BPS states are known. And these are Fourier coefficients of uh, reciprocal of a specific Siegel modular form, uh, which I will uh, mention, I will describe it later on. 
so there is a specific function which counts the uh, you know the degeneracy and it has very nice properties and the index uh, basically at the large charge limit has the property which we want which agrees with the Huffington Huffington Beckenstein formula uh, of the quadratic gps uh, black hole and this is this feature is seen for every model which is connected to the canonical model equals uh, for string theory and now just to get a preview uh, so consider this canonical model. Uh, so this diode has both electric and magnetic charges. These are like uh, the labels of the number of ones you have, qi and pi. And in the large charge limit, uh, this is the formula uh, which we have. This is actually the uh, you know this part comes from the area of the horizon. This is the first degree direction, and this is the geometry kind of description. And certainly, if you uh, count this log of these the generality, which this has. And index, though we have to compare it with the entropy, I will describe that uh, comparison later soon. But it will agree. So, this is the typical formula you have for this, uh, just to have the checked in mind. There is this area term, and then there is correction. Uh, now, the focus of this talk, so this is that's just a preview. Uh, the focus of this talk will be uh, basically the properties of the Siegel modular form and its relations to. The quantum GPS uh, black hole because that's sort of the theme of the meeting itself. Uh, and uh, uh, so, how does the single modular form for each CHL compactification or each of these orbital compactification construction and it's related intimately to something called the twisted electric beam, etc. That will be the first part of this talk. Then there will be another part in which, uh, uh, how given that degeneracy formula, how to extract the large charge expansion of that. And that also relies uh, on a very specific property, so the properties of the Siegel form, a modular transform of the Siegel uh, form. And uh, what do finally the black holes, I mean, the geometric properties of black holes, uh, teach uh, about the sign of the Fourier coefficients of the Siegel model? And the very simple properties of uh, uh, the black hole being basically the horizon being symmetric. Uh, spherically symmetric tells us that the you know sign of the Siegel modular forms should be positive, and they check on that. So these are the sort of three things which we will deal with in this talk. Uh, so first is basically the construction of the Siegel modular form, and that's intimately related to K3. As we saw that K3 was the important component in all this, the type 2 on K3. Uh, so the uh, so K3 is an important component, and so we will uh, talk about the K3 a little bit. Uh, in this first part. Uh, so uh, I, I hope people uh, are aware of certain supersymmetric quantities called elliptic genus. So there's something called the elliptic genus of K3, which is a, a generalization of the Witten index. Uh, essentially, it's a trace, it's like a partition function, trace over the Ramon sector. And this is a 4 4 conformal theory. And uh, it's a trace over the Ramon sector with this specific insertion. This basically computes the energy, all right? And in this uh, anti holomorphic sector, there is no weight. Uh, so, therefore, uh, it doesn't depend because it's almost like it doesn't depend on the z bar coordinates because there is a finite point of the power f bar. Uh, and it has an expansion only, only in this holomorphic coordinates, the so tau and z. Tau here, and uh, the trace is taken over the Ramon sector. And uh, as just because it's like an in an index in the anti holomorphic sector, uh, only the ground state of the left move is accounted, and therefore, Function of the holomorphic Now, this elliptic genus plays an important role in the construction of the Siegel model form. Uh, so, evaluating the index, uh, this is the formula uh, in terms of uh, Jacobi beta functions. I hope people are familiar with it. Uh, these are uh, all the Jacobi beta functions which are not theta one, which vanish that equals zero. So, it's the combination of that uh, which we call A. And if you really want to go ahead and go back home and compute this, uh, you can take this model, a free field theory on uh, fourth order, portion to Z2, and you can perform that trace, and you will be able to get this expression. Uh, so that's the LFP genus of K3. Now, and, and you know, sometime back, I'm getting the year, uh, there was a, a connection of the elliptic genus with something called the Matthew group uh, for moonshine, as they say. Uh, so, uh, how does this connection work? So you rewrite the elliptic genus in terms of characters of n equals four superconformal algebra. Now the characters are basically again some kind of trace of uh, uh, you know the generators. Uh, um, and here 
all you do both all the superpen formulas which are the SU2 as well as the Viracero. So you organize it in terms of the character. So if you organize this with the expression elliptic genus in terms of the character. So uh, here is the elliptic genus, and uh, here are the characters. These are known uh, long term ago. Uh, these, these characters are known, and uh, you can rewrite this as some of these characters because that's after all that's the trait. These are all the characters we have. And you can write this as a sum of these characters. And uh, let's see how it goes. Uh, so here is the, so this is an identity actually. So you can write it as an infinite sum of characters. Uh, so these are the specific uh, characters, the massless character, and this is the first massive. And then there is this tower, uh, which we, uh, we have. And there are these numbers in front of these characters. So essentially, it's the same three theta functions rewritten in this manner. And there are, uh, and these are integers. These numbers were noticed to be integers. This observation of decomposition was noticed by Tibuti, Guri, and Chatikawa in 2010. Uh, so, uh, so you can, uh, like, you can look at these numbers, and uh, you know, okay, initially, of course, you don't see any, uh, any sort of pattern, but they saw a pattern. Uh, they saw that these were dimensions of irreducible re representations of the Matthias group M24. That's quite an amazing, amazing observation, actually. Uh, so they saw that if you take, uh, you know, if you organize the uh, representations in terms of from these model of dimensions, uh, and you take uh, just the dimensions of that representation, and these other, and these other dimensions. Actually, they are complex uh, representations of each other in the tower. Uh, and uh, so that's what they sort of uh, noticed. Now, uh, now uh, so that's one observation, right? Uh, so, uh, the, uh, of course, we want to generalize this uh, also to the quotient. So, uh, so that's the next step. Uh, so, there exists quotients of K3, and, and uh, which we note uh, Nicholas quotients, they are called, and they are quotients by some G prime. And we define the twisted elliptic genus this way. Uh, each quotient is of order from N. And basically, it's the same trait with, uh, with these, uh, you know, with these actions in, inserted inside. Uh, so uh, they have a, there is a label R and S. So for instance, the elliptic genus uh, of K3 does not have this extra uh, label. Uh, uh, this label is called the twining label, and this is called the twisted label. R is called the twisting label. So there is this uh, you know either you can insert that uh, in the trace or you can twist uh, twist the uh, character or the partition function with that trace. So uh, you call this a twisted elliptic genus. That also has some expansion. It's also holomorphic. Okay. So there are these nickeling quotients which are known uh, of K3. Now, uh, for a class, even before the observation of uh, the Matthew group, I mean, the symmetry of the K3, for a class uh, of quotients, uh, these are the specific quotients, 2, 3, and 5, 7, uh, this LT genera was explicitly constructed earlier in the context of Siegel model of form, though we didn't know about the connection with Matthew group. Okay. Uh, so it was constructed earlier. So, and yes. Yeah. Seven. Yeah. So at that time we could just write on because it was. Uh, yeah. I was asking why he stopped at seven. Seven. Yeah. Because. Uh, yeah. So uh, in fact, uh, you know, we knew that there was CHLO omnipoles, uh, and the prime one is the good time track. So because these are related to CHLO omnipoles in heterotic side. On the heterotic side, there are certain portions, and uh, and we could just construct for the prime here. Come out. No, no, no. I was, I was showing you. At that time, we could just do that. Later on, uh, 11, yeah, we have generalized actually. Yeah. So recently, we could do that. Uh, I'll tell you the story of how it evolved. At that time, we could just uh, do the construction. So the problem is that we look at the sigma form. Yeah. The way the sigma form, you, you get, uh, it becomes meromorphic until seven, yeah. then it becomes meromorphic after seven. So you don't get one more five. You don't get one of five then in any case, yeah. Once you once you go to one of five, six, one of five, yeah. Then wait, yeah. 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 I'm going to give a little bit. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, actually, this, uh, for instance, this construction, these constructions, you can actually do like this uh, n equals two. You can take another portion of T4. So, for instance, A3, T4 by then. Uh, this n equals two version is a, yet another portion on that, and that portion can be realized geometrically. 
and you can use that portion to construct everything. So n equals three also has a geometry like uh, on on t four by the uh, z. So you take t four by z, and that's supposed to be k. And then there's a further question uh, on that uh, after formula. <laughs> uh, so there's a further question, and that you can create n equals three. And yet another question for n equals three. So these questions are realized geometrically uh, on the uh, yes. and you can then compute the for these, for these classes. The other ones are not very geometric. That's why we couldn't construct them. I will, I will show you actually how to just Yeah. But isn't there some argument also about that beyond seven, there's some extra one of the other two problems? Well, uh, let me just tell you about how, how these uh, construction work, at least for a class. That's how. Uh, uh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> yeah, because I can't see it fully, and that's the thing. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so here's an example, actually, example of uh, the explicit form. Uh, in fact, um, you can see this is uh, the zero, zero, where uh, none of these things are inserted, uh, uh, is, is like this. And, uh, and then there is another form. This, this is basically the elliptic genus of K3, and then there is this additional genus. Uh, where B is this particular modular form and E2 is another one like this. Okay. And uh, let's get some intuition about this quotient. I mean, after all, we're just talking about these quotients. Uh, so some geometric properties of this quotient can be uh, got by looking at the very low lying, uh, you know, uh, low lying expansions. What are these Cs? These Cs are basically uh, these expansions. And if you look at these uh, expansions of the elliptic genus in terms of the tau variable and the z variable, and if you look at the very low lying ones, uh, like basically no tau, uh, so uh, roughly, uh, and if you look at uh, the low lying ones, you can re read out topological data from it. Uh, for instance, this one should be the number of 0, 0, and 0, 2 form and so on. And if you evaluate that, the number of invariant ones, because you're summing over all of the uh, insertions. So this is a number of in, uh, invariant ones. Uh, so these ones, they don't change. Uh, for the K3, this is the same, right? And what happens is the H11 forms basically reduce. Uh, so the number of H11 forms keep reducing. Uh, uh, and uh, this is the formula, at least for the prime case, this is the formula, uh, uh, how it reduces. You can, uh, you can see this particular formula. Uh, you can substitute uh, inside all these ends which we did, and you will get a particular form. Eleven, for instance, is like zero or something. Yeah. So it's weird. So the, that means the Taylor form is projected out, and that's not very geometric. Um, yeah. Clearly, if that formula, I should not take it seriously because N is bigger than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly not. Yeah. So there are other formulas because you can construct those things. Explicitly uh, using uh, the moonshine, uh, I'll tell you how, how to construct them explicitly. So here, for instance, our constructions earlier, before moonshine was discovered, was just explicitly just writing down those elliptic genus uh, using certain uh, quotient constructions. But uh, later on, I mean, when moonshine was discovered, so this is the list of those things, actually. Uh, 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 yeah, so. Uh, so these, let me describe a little bit more words about these constructions. So, uh, so once you have these quotients, uh, you can construct compactifications associated with these quotients of K3, uh, in which this Zn acts basically by this G prime quotient on K3 together with the one by N shifts. Okay. And there are three additional uh, geometric ones which were known from the days of, uh, you know, 90s, I think, uh, called CHL, for the four, six, and eight, which were non-prime actually. And all of these quotients, uh, you know, uh, they, they don't act on the other four uh, zero two forms and so on. So they all preserve the n equals four supersymmetry of uh, uh, in d equals four. Uh, now, yeah. Yeah, these are not, these are not prime. Is that not, that's yeah. And then like, uh, they are, when you say not geometric, they are in some seven B, seven C. Yeah, yeah. So I will, I will tell you. Yeah, I will tell that. So I think, yeah, how that. Yeah. Uh, so with the discovery of Matthew Moonshine, there's an organization to this actually, which uh, happened. Okay. So uh, it was found that every for every conjugacy class 
of and so you, you we saw that you know somehow the character the full k3 is elliptic genome could be written in terms of the sum of the characters where all those numbers are uh, you know uh, you know dimensions of irreducible representations now for every conjugacy class g prime of m24 one can construct this twining character which is zero one basically one of these insertions right uh, and i'll tell you the construction how does the construction go go actually uh, so you can construct this twining character and uh, and because uh, because there are 26 conjugacy classes in m24 you can construct 26 uh, you know uh, twining characters in all and this was uh, actually initially done i mean once soon after the observation of uh, of the moonshine uh, by iguchi and uh, you know uh, tachikawa and oguri uh, then uh, immediately after that these papers came out uh, in which you can construct these twining characters for every 26 of these things uh, conjugacy classes and the twining, I'll tell you how the construction works. Uh, so the twining character, uh, I, I will also describe this a little bit more in detail, uh, which we, of the, you know, twisted uh, uh, elliptic genus which we constructed earlier, will agree, uh, agrees with this. Actually. So let me just describe how this twining character is constructed. Now, suppose we look at the Z2, uh, uh, you know, the N equals two quotient, which I have an explicit formula for, which I gave. You rewrite again uh, the characters, Right, uh, you change this coefficient a bit, okay. But what you do, this is uh, what you do here. Instead of those uh, numbers of, you know, the number of, uh, you know, dimensions of the irreducible representation, uh, which, uh, which occur, you uh, you have a different set of numbers, okay. And these numbers are basically uh, numbers taken by something called the McKay-Thompson series, okay. What are they? They are basically dimensions uh, of you know, of like G prime, a particular, you know, uh, traces of elements of in a particular conjugacy class, because this is uh, just because you are taking trace, so it, is, it depends on the conjugacy class. So you take the elements uh, of the group, uh, uh, take the trace uh, of that particular uh, element in, and so this is sensitive only to conjugacy class. So you take that dimension and instead of one, you put in the elements of the group, right? Uh, and uh, for every conjugacy class, you'll get a set of numbers. Uh, and therefore, you can construct this object like this. Okay. So, and since there are 26 conjugacy, uh, conjugacy classes, you can construct 26 of these guys, uh, of these twining characters. Okay. And uh, so, in fact, uh, what, uh, they, in fact, I think uh, it was, uh, they checked, cross checked that our two, three, five, seven, uh, you know, uh, quotients which we constructed earlier constructed uh, uh, coincides with the particular, they identified the conjugacy classes they, they belong to. Uh, so, uh, so a similar method can be, of course, just here I will just describe uh, 2A, but you can see the construction is very general. If you, you know, if you take other elements in another conjugacy class, you will get, uh, you will get different numbers and you can, uh, you can construct the twining character for that. So for every 26, uh, you know, of these, uh, uh, you can construct these twi uh, twining characters. So that's just F01. Okay. And this was constructed in these papers actually, uh, uh, just soon after the moonshine discovery. Now here is the list of the conjugacy classes. So uh, these are the CHL orbifolds, okay? And uh, this is a particular, the cycle of the conjugacy cl class and so on. There's some more in this. Uh, and uh, there is another set of type two, which is called. It, it is a little bit bigger. It's in conjugacy class in which it is not the sub, it doesn't belong to this subgroup. Uh, so it is this particular class. So there are these 26 conjugacy classes. Now, uh, so once you have the twining character using modular transformations, right, you can go to the other ones because you, know, you can move it around by modular transformations. Okay. And you can try to construct a full, full set because you know you have f01 f02 and so on up to f0n and then f11 and so on i mean you have the full set and you can use these uh, you know modular transformations together with you know it involves some work but you can try to construct a full uh, full set okay so you, from the moonshine you had really f01 uh, and then from modular transformations and so on and various other inputs you can try to construct uh, some other inputs you can construct this the complete set now uh, we, I mean, we didn't know that some parts of the constructions was known earlier, but we uh, we could do this for the type one completely. We have a list in the paper 
for the type one completely uh, in closed form for each of those uh, twisted elliptic genus. Now, in this paper, after we like we submitted to the journal, <laughs> so they wrote back saying that uh, you know uh, this paper uh, has a implicit construction. Uh, so there is an ancillary file. If you go go to the archive, there's an ancillary file, and uh, you can uh, you know it gives you the expansions. It doesn't give you in the closed form. It gives you an expansions of those twisted elliptic genes. And uh, this is just the history I'm just telling you. So and earlier on, for a particular class four B, it was known by uh, by these authors. Okay. And the uh, and the checks for the expressions what we have closed forms completely. Uh, has been done uh, a little bit by this uh, this people. Uh, they have cross checked it with these uh, uh, the authors of this. Uh, so uh, so for all this class, this set of classes, the whole thing, uh, there is a construction for the twisted elliptic chain. That's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. Modular transfer. So full modular group or uh, yeah, so you use the full bundle group because you have to move move into the zero one, and zero two, you have to use that completely. But, but the invariances are the subgroups. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. What does twenty six mean for the gravitational side? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know because the gravitational side, you know, uh, for instance, even this is not very geometric. Uh, let me go back. Yeah, these guys, this 11, for instance, is not very geometric, actually. So uh, I don't know how to actually construct them. I mean, only these green guys are being constructed as gra gravitational background. But, uh, and this one, for instance, I think we have some partial result. Like, it's an abstract CFP compact. Yeah. Like, uh, of course, I mean, K3 cross T2 is a very explicit uh, compactification, and there's a geometric meaning for it. But then uh, these guys, for instance, as uh, in terms of some Vesemino model, you can compact uh, some, you know, manifold, which is uh, not a manifold, it's just an abstract CFT with uh, some FU2 times FU2, I think FU2 cubed kind of model it is. Uh, that is known for this uh, 3B, for instance, is known. So it's not very geometric. So. How many? All of them have any Yeah, they don't go here. I mean, it doesn't break because. Uh, because you know uh, these things don't project. You can check when after you calculate the LP genus, you can calculate the zero two form, two zero form, and so on. So they don't get projected out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So people try to understand the original twenty four. Yeah. The people, as far as people didn't succeed, and so. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's an argument against having M twenty four as an actual symmetry. But your your results strongly suggest it's actually there. So yeah. well, you know, you know, you know, we haven't constructed we have that out of this fellow. I mean, when fully EM24 is there, only yes. these two are constructed. Ah, as some kind of abstract theory. And yes. uh, it's not very really confidential for this one. I think these ones are, I don't think there's any, yeah. Uh, like, but uh, Matthias paper, if you go to that file, uh, you can read out. I mean, I think it has a few expansions for it. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it is there. I mean, but we haven't used that because we don't have a closed form for that. We haven't actually used it to do black hole things with that. But that's another whole game. You know, like if people could take from those uh, files and try to understand that more. I think, yeah, we didn't realize that the files are there because it's not mentioned in the text. In the paper, it is not mentioned. But uh, but after I talked to Mark Matthias, he said those files are there. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay. So we will be mostly in this, you know, so, because we have explicit expressions for all of these. So that is not M24. Small. Uh, so uh, okay. Uh, so this is the history of this construction. Now, uh, so uh, this is just a list of the ones which we have, uh, and these are green ones are which were known a long time ago as the HL of the quotes itself. And <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And here is the generic form. This is the generic form is actually quite simple. Uh, like, uh, you know, if you look at F00, it is just some number times a uh, some number times the elliptic genus itself. 
And all of these are a linear combination of the elliptic genus together with this particular form. And you just have to list out these, these modular forms, uh, which are, uh, you know, they uh, transform under the gamma zero n. Uh, so you just have to list it out and we have it in this nice, uh, neat form, which is actually quite useful in the further calculations. Now, uh, so as I said, as we discussed before events, uh, so, you know, uh, many of these are not geometric portions, uh, especially the non-green ones, <laughs> they're not no geometric portions. And uh, for every, uh, uh, yeah, so for instance, the 11, which is I explained, yeah, the Keller form is projected out. And there are the non-geometric ones. So all of them are not uh, geometric, but the green ones are actually. So now, uh, given the twisted elliptic genus, how does one, you know, construct the dions? I mean, how does you can, can construct that generating function for dions? Now, uh, so what is the relevance of that? So again, as I said, we construct, uh, we look at type 2b on K3 cross T2, where Zn is the action on G prime, and uh, 1 by N shifts on the T2. One of the chief, and these compact equation all preserve n equals four. Uh, so they all have some n equals four, at least the geometric ones are clear. Uh, they have n equals four uh, vacua. And, um, and uh, you know, for every conjugacy class, in principle, even if you include all the ones which Matthias' group has constructed, uh, you have in principle, you know, some uh, particular vacua for N24. Um, and uh, each of these I admit quarter BPS states. Now, and these are solid terms with both electric and magnetic charges. And for large charges, they can be identified with supersymmetric black holes. Now, what is the partition function? Uh, this has a very long history, actually, how to write the partition functions for, uh, for these, uh, you know, given this particular compactification. So you have a particular modular form, which I will describe uh, before. It is a function of three variables, uh, rho, sigma, and V. And, uh, you know, you have to do a Fourier transform of this, a Fourier uh, inverse, basically, to read out the degeneracies. So this is the electric, uh, this is the magnetic charges. This is Q squared because you have to look at the invariant charge. I mean, you know, uh, because there is this uh, T-duality symmetry. So this is basically that. Uh, Q squared is the T-duality uh, invariant object. P squared is that. And similarly, this is an uh, invariant object. So you have to do this particular transform, and that is the degeneracy. Now, this has a long history, a very long history, actually. Uh, initially, it was uh, conjectured by, uh, you know, uh, Diagrapha Linde Valende, uh, and then Gaeta Strominger had a sort of uh, proof uh, by the 4D, 5D. Uh, we had generalized it and so on, and uh, I think Suresh is not <laughs> here yet. Yeah, he was also involved in uh, this, uh, you know, setting up this degeneracy formula. Okay. Uh, so let me describe this. There is a contour uh, by which you have to do this integral to do the Fourier transform. Uh, and uh, the contour is basically, because it's a three variable, it's, uh, it's a contour in three, you know, three, three complex dimensional space. Essentially, uh, you have to take the imaginary part, uh, the, real, uh, yeah, the real part, you're just running over like zero to two pi. And the imaginary part is fixed, but to certain large numbers. Okay. Uh, and you have to fix it in such a way that, uh, you know, that the, what you do basically is first expand in powers. I will explain this much more uh, again. Uh, expand, expand these powers of the Siegel modular form, which I will explain how to construct, and then perform the ex expansion in, uh, in V. So there is a particular way of writing this, uh, you know, doing this transform and reading out the degeneracies. And now this formula, of course, I mean, the Proof of this also takes a lot of effort. I mean, uh, you know, because you one modeled the ion in terms of the D1, D5 system, and uh, and there was a counting uh, using that uh, is where how you got this formula. For this. So, but I wouldn't go into that because that that also will take <laughs> take a long time to go into. So, but let us accept this uh, formula. And so here is the Siegel model of form, uh, and you see, uh, so it's basically a, a sort of infinite product structure. So it looks very complex and everything, but roughly speaking, it's an infinite product structure, just very much like the eta function, which is an infinite product uh, structure. Uh, uh, that is only one complex variable. Here there are three complex variables. And uh, the coefficients, the powers which come in the infinite product structure are uh, the elliptic genes, twisted elliptic genes. So all the coefficients of the twisted elliptic genes are necessary. The CRS, the complete coefficient is necessary uh, uh, to, to actually write down this formula. So given the twisted elliptic genus, uh, those numbers, you can write this down. Okay. 
uh, and uh, they uh, you know they have a particular transformation property. It's, uh, uh, it's not that crucial for our discussion, but uh, it is important. Uh, it is a generalization of the you know eta function uh, transformation properties, uh, generalization of the SL two. Uh, similar, you can see that you know it's c tau plus d inverse a tau a omega plus b. It's like a tau plus d. I mean c a tau plus b divided by c tau plus d. So it's a generalization of that transformation. Uh, under that, it transforms a particular weight. So that's why I've been calling this weight k, um, and it transforms as a particular weight. Um, uh, under this uh, transformation sp to z and this weight k is what was is actually half of the you know h11 of the k3 so it's uh, uh, it's related to the topological data of the k3 now here is the sort of weights uh, for various things uh, so uh, of the all the uh, this is the chl uh, set and this is the extra guy um, so the index so let's uh, first okay once we we have this formula Somehow we have got this by counting. We don't know. Uh, I mean, like I haven't described the counting to you, but say we accept that we have got this from uh, some counting. Let's do the first test. Basically, take the large charge limit uh, of this thing. Uh, so the index at large charges. And uh, so the, the large charge limit of this quarter BPS uh, diodes can be identified as external black holes. And uh, let's get an idea of these microscopic uh, degeneracies and how they are uh, you know, approach this talking Bekenstein entropy. So we have a formula for the exact degeneracy, right? It's a very explicit formula. And in principle, using Mathematica, we can extract out the low coefficients. We just expand it like the way we are supposed to expand it. And we can read out the low uh, you know, Fourier coefficient. We can also perform a saddle point evaluation of that integral, right? And the result from saddle point is what has an interpretation in terms of the gravity description, right? And we can actually, you know, because uh, we have this Mathematica, I mean, like, uh, since we are uh, having this particular package, like Mathematica routine, we can actually, like, you know, uh, we, we can actually uh, try to compare it against saddle point, which is what we will do. So how to perform the saddle point? And here also a property of that Siegel model of form and number theoretic uh, properties come in uh, a little bit. So how to perform the saddle point? So you consider this transformation. This is just a transformation right now uh, of the uh, three complex variables, right? And it has a particular inverse. Now in this set of variables, the saddle point is actually one, one the leading saddle point is actually at v equal zero. Now, uh, once you substitute that transformation into that uh, degeneracy formula, it just becomes this. So, uh, so this becomes phi tilde, phi tilde uh, of this guy. Okay. Now the contour is correspondingly mapped. And there is this very nice property of this sp to z that under this transformation, it goes into another modular form. Okay. Uh, and it's the same weight, uh, same weight, I forgot to put that key. It's the same weight, but it goes into another modular form. And the saddle point, uh, uh, actually in this form, it is, located at v equals one. And so that's how the saddle point is done. So there is the amount of uh, mathematical thing which goes into trying to find the saddle point. So uh, the saddle point is located at v equals one in this transformed modular form. And uh, for the case of K3- uh, Sorry, Justin. Yeah. yeah. In, in principle, you could just look at the zeros of the modular form and do a residue calculation, right? Yeah. To get to the leading saddle. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you so do. It sounds that's very complicated the way you are describing it. Um, well, uh, yeah. So um, yeah, we could do that. And, and essentially, it is that and going into uh, into this. But at, uh, somehow, at large charge limit, it's good to actually it's, it's similar to the eta function, right? If you want to find the large charge limit for the you know BPS states, it is convenient to go to the modular transform of that to read out the uh, read out the large charge behavior. That's how for just for the half year we would do that. Uh, so uh, so it is just that it's a, it's a small technique for doing. <laughs> so in that regard, you are deforming the contour because the original contour did not have any any yeah, any, yeah, uh, yeah, any the pole, yeah. like in the original way that you right. decided how you were expanding. Yeah. yeah, that contour does not have yeah. any of these saddle points. It's because you're yeah, extending you you're, you're extending it and then you're yeah. getting all the residues. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Just so, like, yeah, and we are believing that there are no, uh, I mean, there's no problem. And you'll see, or at least of the corrections that yeah. you have 
because you can yeah. close the pump to one of them. Yes, yeah. our exponential is a kind of right. interesting. Yeah, all the other I will actually show you the comparison between mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's similar to the eta function. Then you do the eta function also, it's a function, and then you deform it. Then you deform it. It's a usually just a circle, but then you deform the function. And that's how you do the parallel point. And then you do that, it's convenient to go to the model transform of the eta function. So, and in fact, when you do that, it's very kind of, because there is this constant which comes in uh, when you uh, when you have this. There's a constant, and uh, and this constant. I mean, in for the uh, for the pi case, which most most of the people here are probably is familiar with the with the with the unordered folded case. In fact, this transform uh, uh, is not necessary. I mean, that's the reason you are saying that uh, the transform is necessary, not necessary because this. Uh, the transform coincides with that's what you want to form. Yeah. And the transform coincides with phi tech. It coincides, it becomes it is the same as phi tech actually. Uh, and the constant C1 is one. Uh, but in the CHL uh, you know uh, uh, compactification, the transform is slightly different. And there is a non-trivial C1, and we'll see how it plays a role. Uh, there's a non-trivial constant in front of this transform. Uh, and that plays a role, slight a slight role, at least in some way. And uh, at v goes to zero, uh, it's basically this uh, form factorizes in this manner. In the Python, you are, uh, if people are familiar with Python, uh, it is it factorizes into products of eta twenty four. Okay. Uh, so here uh, eta twelve, eta twelve. Yeah. So uh, so here it factorizes into some other model of form, which is a subgroup of uh, of those uh, SL two. Uh, and here is the list of the factorization. Uh, actually, there is a particular list. And the corrections. Uh, so let's call the log of the degeneracy. Uh, okay, when you do the saddle point approximation, let's call it log. Yeah. So we are doing the saddle point with the together with the one loop uh, correction around it, right? And that's let me call that S one. Okay, and let's take log of that log of this uh, thing, and that's called S one. Uh, and we get this particular formula. So this is entirely from the model of form, and we get this particular formula. We get these extra terms. Because of that factorization property, and together we get that constant. Uh, we get a constant, uh, and uh, and at the saddle point, these these are you know, valued in terms of charges. So it's completely in terms of charges, and we get this constant. Now uh, the constant is this. It's basically log of that n c one. Uh, so it is uh, this constant, and it vanishes of course for k three plus k two. There's no constant for that. Now. We can compare, uh, so we have this one loop answer. We can compare it with actually the numbers because we have mathematical routine. I mean, uh, we just have to put this in the computer uh, and we can just read out those degeneracies and just compare it with the saddle point. So how far we get, how close we get, right? Uh, and this comparison was done earlier for the unobvious folded cases by, you know, by these authors. Uh, now let's do it for the obvious folded cases. Now, uh, I want to do, because to emphasize this constant, because you know, I, I know many people are working on something related, so that's why I'm trying to emphasize this constant. Uh, so uh, let's do two things. We, we take the expressions with the constant, okay, and uh, look at the exact degeneracy minus the one with the constant and divide by exactly 100%. So this is the percentage error. Uh, when we do the exact degeneracies with the saddle point approximation. Here, I'm adding this. So in principle, that means I'm removing the constant uh, and uh, doing it. So one is with the constant and one is without the constant. And how, how close we get to the exact degeneracy. Okay. Now here are the numbers. Uh, so these are very low charges. And you can see how the saddle point is working very well. So these are very low charges, right? And this is the degeneracy. This is the you know log of this guy. This is the log of just this guy. This is the exact degeneracy. You can see it's all integers. Uh, and this is the log of this guy, okay. And this is the uh, one with the that square root formula with you know with all that stuff. Uh, this formula, uh, with this formula, with the constant, with the constant. Uh, and this is a percentage error. And you can see if I don't include the constant, the errors are very large actually. So the constant is very crucial for you know for the obvious case, right? Uh, and the constant vanishes for the, you know, for the uh, unobvious folded cases, and uh, but it's very crucial actually to, uh, to match. Mm. 
you can see another example the 3a another orbit fold and uh, you can see the percentage errors uh, with the constants and uh, this is with the constants without the constants so the constant is very crucial uh, and um, and what is it sort of uh, and I, we have done it for all the cases so all the cases where we have explicit construction of the twisted elliptic genus we have tested it and it is quite important and a similar feature was seen for all the orbit folds uh, it's crucial for the saddle point approximation to agree with the low values of charges and uh, we have shown that the same constant appears in the subleading parallel points. And what is the implications of this? Hmm? So let's go back, uh, and also it will help us to teach uh, thing. So let's go back to the saddle point approximation, and how does it compare geometrically? So this, of course, is the area, right? And this is known to come from the R squared correction, right? This is known from this, uh, known to come from the R squared correction. So the first term arises from the area formula. The second term involves this, you know, uh, the model of form, which is basically the gauss bonnet or the R squared term in correction to the vault. So it's from the vault correction. And I think this was like, uh, even before all these counting and everything, I think uh, Gabriel was involved in uh, initiating this, Gabriel and uh, Bernard, and uh, I don't know uh, the other others, actually, I haven't met them. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, you know, so they, uh, so this explains this extra term, this extra term from geometric point of view, but this constant, uh, cannot be fixed because, you know, here, if you add a constant in four dimensions, so this is a gauss Uh, if you add a constant in, uh, gauss bonnet it's not fixed by a string amplitude calculation. So we can't like get that constant, uh, as far as I know, uh, uh, from the string side, I mean, uh, and, uh, you know, we can't determine it because it's a total derivative and, you know, string amplitudes are insensitive to that. And the constant also, I think, is relevant because I'm, because I'm telling, because many people are uh, thinking of these things. So, uh, so recently, there is a saddle point analysis and it has been refined for the unobifolded model. And the, now there is an exact formula for this. So I've just given the saddle point and a one loop correction around it. But there is a now a rewriting of this one over five ten in terms of sum over saddle points exactly, uh, uh, exactly, and you know uh, they have shown that the integer occurs uh, sort of it's closer and closer to the integer as you sum over all the saddle points. So these are the papers for that, okay, uh, which sort of realizes that exact Radomach is called a Radomach expansion for this one over five ten. So they have done it for the unobfolded cases. Uh, and uh, and in that when I saw those uh, calculations, I haven't gone through it completely. Uh, so this factorization was very important. Right. And uh, and here, you know, uh, so since we have seen that this and uh, this factorization here for the saddle point involves this constant, so I think this constant should play a role uh, in this full Radomach expansions when we go into the CHL uh, models. And uh, another aspect of this is that. Uh, there are these developments by the Volker and Murthy and a lot of followers after that, uh, that, uh, you know, you can, uh, there is a sort of localization in gravity, uh, which, which sort of hopes to reproduce the exact uh, formula, uh, exact formula from, uh, you know, uh, uh, exact formula, the degeneracy formula. And it has been, uh, you know, only the obifolded case uh, has been addressed. And, uh, and if at all, uh, one can use this uh, method. Uh, this constant would play a role. I mean, it, it, because you know, you see that how important it is to get the low line charges. So, uh, so I think these things. I mean, you know, when you do it carefully, maybe this constant would play a role. So, uh, so I end with uh, you know, that's one aspect of it, large charge. Again, so the S one, the like at least name, I was just looking at it quickly. It's, it's uh, yeah, so let's look at that for one. Yeah. I guess that's S1, right? Yeah. Meaning, this is the Yeah, thing, yeah. The, the, when you get like the conversion from the other one. Right, right, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, I'm sure it's the case of the P. So, uh -huh. yeah. so that's here. Yeah. Okay. So, usually, uh, so these degeneracies should be invariant under the exchange of t squared and t squared. squared yeah, yeah. And so naively, I I would have thought like okay the second yeah. time 
doesn't mainly because of that look very in the very it's change of the square, square, square. square. Yeah. but you might have thought that that yeah. could have been a bigger effect but it is yeah. actually uh it is a variant on the field square yeah i have it's not taken the seat from here but in the actual number yeah 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 it is not the most actually, but you know, because if you oh. go to high, yeah, because if you go to high enough charges, these are really low. These are really low. So if you go to high enough, I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter at all. But for low charges, it's important. I mean, and the reason I'm emphasizing this is because now people are doing exact things. Uh, exact things. And if at all we are aiming for exact things, I think this constant should uh, play. What was the definition of C1 in terms of the coefficients of the liquid? Yeah, is there some number? No, but can you relate it to the C, uh, the, the CRS? Or... No, no, it's just, yeah, it's related to the N, the orbifold N, and K is the CRS. K is the, like, H11. Uh, so it's the okay, sum gotcha. over that. Uh, no, it's just I want to bring that yeah. Yeah. Corrections, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, in fact, this is that K, yeah, that's the same. Yeah, yeah. So, this K actually comes in front, I think. Yeah, K comes here. Like, if you take the last tau limit of this thing, the K plus two yeah, comes. Exactly. Yeah, I think K plus two. Yeah, that's no, yeah. Well, he gave us homework. Uh -huh. no. In relationship to the homework of like, what does it mean for gravity to yeah. care about this number? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the homework. Yeah, yeah. We thought for a while, but yeah, yeah. How to get it from gravity? Yeah. Sort of, yeah. Because I mean, you know, okay, for large charge, certainly it doesn't matter at all. But in low charges, it seems to be mattering. And then if there is all these exact methods uh, of rewriting the complete phi tense uh, localization as well as this, then it that's important because the claim is that it's an exact expression, exactly right. So, uh, it's sort of, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think I'm going faster. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, uh, so I, I leave it at that because that's where we stopped actually, and I, I didn't think about the problem after that. Um, so, maybe, so the the logarithmic corrections to the that log in all kg moles should be zero, right? Yes, yes. The log corrections to this uh, that's a different limit. Actually. Right, right. I'll tell you the limit. Um, yeah. So that's actually large charge all like scaling. You know, same scaling. Yeah, same scaling of q t and uh, thing. So therefore, if you look at all this, this becomes order one. It becomes order one. Uh, all these things become part of one. So, in that sense, there is no area to log area kind of term. That's the sense in which I think uh, the uh, quantum correction is program. So, you're saying this mm -hmm. Q square P square exchange is only in some like numerical. No, no, I think it's anything, but I haven't, uh, like we have seen it numerically. It should be. Because if it is agreeing with the, with the actual number, then it will be true. Most probably some kind of transform. We have to do some particular transform. Uh, Q and P. Q and P. This is uh, invariant, for instance. Yeah. So tau going to yeah. Yeah. I don't know how exactly to do it, but but we have noticed that it is invariant and uh, and the Q and P exchange. Yeah. Yeah. That is for the obvious word, but in the um, in the maximally symmetric uh, canonical model, we just have the exchange. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there must be a property actually yeah, because it's exact the exact relation actually. Um, yeah. um so similar okay, similar to such things is the next thing called the positive T conjecture. Um conjecture is a uh, sure. Uh, so, so are there more tests? So that was one particular test. So are there more tests? Now, uh, so there is a simple fact that black holes with zero angular momentum 
uh, admit a horizon which is spherically symmetric. This is four dimensional black holes. We are not, we are really in four dimensions, except that we have supersymmetry. Uh, so, uh, so if it is zero angular momentum, the horizon is spherically symmetric. Now we see that actually, uh, we'll see, uh, that's what I try to show, uh, that this, just the fact that we have the spherically symmetric horizon, uh, it predicts an important property of the Siegel modular form. And it predicts that certain, uh, you know, Fourier expansions of the Siegel modular form are positive. So let's see how it goes. And then, and then it, this will also help us to understand what we are actually doing. I've just given you the formula. So what we are actually computing this degeneracy formula is actually something called the index, supersymmetric index. Now uh, it's a particular trace. So this B, which I've been writing, this degeneracy is actually a computation of this index, uh, which is a sort of written index, uh, uh, a little slight generalization of index, uh, written index so that the zero modes are taken care of. Uh, right, so this is the particular index um, in which J is the Z component of the angular momentum of that particular state, say in rest frame, uh, and these are the angular momentum of the zero modes. And then, you know, to saturate the zero modes, you have this. So essentially, what why we need that is because suppose you look at k is equal to zero, and uh, you know, if you look at k is equal to zero, it's just a recall about the index what we are calculating. Two J is even for bosons. 2j is odd for fermions and therefore you know k is equal to zero there is nothing like this we're just counting bosons minus fermions right uh, that's the written index okay and uh, so usually a bps states have you know which breaks some partial supersymmetry there is some zero mode associated with it and uh, the fermionic zero mode uh, uh, you know because of that uh, there are fermionic zero modes just like uh, you must be familiar. Uh, if you have a soliton, it has some translation zero modes, just like that. There are supersymmetric zero modes, and uh, then you know because uh, once you have the zero modes, the ground state is paired. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is the two states, and they are paired. And for every boson, there is a corresponding fermions. So therefore, I mean, the index will vanish if, if you don't have those insertions. Okay. Uh, so if the number of bosons. I mean, because it'll be equal all the time and it'll just vanish. So V0 vanishes on GPS states. Now, if you think about it, you have to think a little bit about it. Uh, uh, then, you know, this, we have to put in the number of uh, insertions must equal to the number of unbroken uh, supersymmetric generators uh, or broken so in fermionic zero mode. So you have to put some six here because that's the number of 12 unbroken, uh, 12 symmetries of broken. And uh, so those are the ones which you have to insert. You have to think a little bit about this. Yeah. Uh, so that is the index we are actually calculating. Okay. Uh, so the counting formula is actually the evaluation of the index. And, and though I didn't detail the counting formula, so when when go through the counting formula and get that uh, gets that modular form, you actually calculate uh, this index. So that's the thing. That's now I have actually made it a little bit more uh, specific. I have related that index. Uh, of that set of configuration to the formula which we've been looking at. And uh, so let's analyze the states which you know, contribute to a single centered black hole. So we have, so this is a BPS state. Therefore, uh, as people know that you can put two states together uh, and, you know, and they don't attract on something like that. You can sort of create multi-centered black holes of this kind. But let's look at a single centered case, okay? And, uh, and, you know, uh, a particular black hole has usually some kind of hair. We will see, uh, the zero modes are a particular kind of hair, actually. So there is a horizon and uh, there is a horizon Hilbert space, as well as this extra degrees of freedom, which stays a little outside that. So that's called a hair. Uh, and they are localized outside. One can explicitly show that. Actually, there are papers which show it, uh, that there is a hair degrees of freedom, which is localized outside. Now, let's look at the index. The index actually counts everything. It counts not only single centered black holes, but also multi centered and the hair and everything together. Okay. So the index counts everything. So let's first focus on the single centered case and see and only look at this hair contribution. So, so the angular momentum of the states will, you know, will be, it will be the sum of the horizon as well as hair. So horizon and the hair. And so you have all this, this particular formula. Okay. And uh, uh, this, you know, this, this particular thing, there is no, Hair degrees of freedom because this is just the horizon. Uh, it does not have zero modes uh, and so on. So, so the hair comes, I mean, this part comes only from the hair. So the formula reduces to this. Uh, and, and we can split again. 
okay, when you're taking the trace, you're summing over a specific, spe specific set of configuration. And what we have is there is this index factorizes just because the invert space factorizes, the index factorizes uh, into a contribution from the horizon degrees of freedom and the contribution from the higher degrees of freedom. Uh, and uh, in fact, if you if you look at this, uh, the horizon uh, contributes like this to the index, and it's just the uh, you know uh, within index here. Yeah. Okay. So we don't need because we all the zero modes and everything uh, you know J zero mode and the zero modes are completely higher degrees of freedom, so it doesn't contribute there. So this is just the Witten index of the horizon, and if, uh, if the black hole is spherical, spherically symmetric, it just becomes you know. Uh, a trace of j is equal to zero, so it just becomes the degree of freedom of the horizon. Now, so this is the conjecture that uh, because uh, the black hole is spherically symmetric, uh, you know, it, once you extract the horizon degree of freedom, uh, you should have this degeneracies to be positive. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let's see how to extract the horizon. So we got to split the horizon degree of freedom. You also have to focus on single-centered black hole because this whole argument worked with as though the black hole is the single center uh, and so on. Uh, so we have to do two things. We have to factorize, uh, we have to make sure that we are uh, in a single centered hop configuration and we have to factorize the hair degrees of freedom. So the, suppose let's focus on the hair. So if, if the full partition function is of this kind and say we are able to evaluate the hair partition function, then we just divide. Then we just divide it and we just get the hair degrees of freedom because the Hilbert space factorizes. Uh, uh, and uh, and what it says is that once you divide it, once you extract the hair, uh, this coefficient should be positive. Okay. Uh, so that's the conjecture actually. Now uh, there is one, of course, there's one more thing to be done. We have to focus on single centered black holes. Okay, and that also uh, led to a lot of development. Uh, and uh, you know, as uh, the index counts both multi centered and center uh, single centered, so we somehow have to focus uh, on that. There is a two ways of doing it actually. Um, uh, so okay, this is just a summary uh, that uh, because you know the thread of arguments is quite large. So we have to extract the single-centered black holes from the index Bx, factorize the horizon degrees of freedom, and then examine the sign of the index. Okay. Now there are two ways of extracting single-centered black holes. There is one way which is sort of uh, easy to implement in Mathematica. Uh, it's basically, uh, you know, look for certain specific charge configuration which lie in something called the attractor chamber, which have, you know, in the modelized space of that integral, when you do the contour integral, there is a particular uh, chamber which is called the attractor chamber. I think it was found with Cheng and Berlin, they have the site. Uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, you know, once you focus on those particular configuration, uh, then you are in a single centered configuration. Okay, that's uh, it's easy to implement in Mathematica. We just have to look for specific configurations. Uh, here is the, for every orbifold, there is a particular domain, and we, we just have to look for that. Now, there's another more analytic approach uh, to this isolating single centered, uh, you know, uh, configurations. Uh, it's using the Fourier Jacobi coefficients. So basically, there's another ex there's an expansion of this pi inverse of pi k in terms of uh, you know. In terms of this magnetic charge, so you expand this p, which is basically this space, uh, you expand it in this form in terms of its magnetic uh, charges, uh, and you have uh, then a particular modular form. Uh, now it is a simple modular form because it's a function of tau and z only, with the ones which you are familiar with more, uh, and you know you can expand it like this. And this one was noticed by uh, I think the Volker, Samir, and uh, and uh, Zajier. That you can split this into two parts, um, a polar and a finite. And now the polar part contains all the poles and everything. That is what is sensitive to multi-centered configurations and so on. That is what you know um, sort of captures those things. Uh, and this finite part, which which is actually represents the contribution of the single-centered one. So uh, so there is this nice structure. And this decomposition was done by, you know, the Volker, uh, Murthy, and Zajier uh, uh, in this manner. So here is some example. So for instance, p squared is equal to zero. There is the split of this kind where everything is known. Huh? This is known and this is known. And there is an additional structure because it's sort of some number theory <laughs> thing which comes in. There's an additional structure that, you know, this finite part always has the 
you know, a mock model of form. It has a mock model of form. And uh, so uh, this, in fact, is the simplest one, which we know, Eisenstein model of weight two. Essentially, for us, the mock model of form is something which, when you add uh, a piece to it, uh, you know, a sort of not a holomorphic piece to it, it transforms like a nice holomorphic model of form. So, uh, so there are these uh, decomposition. So here's the decomposition, uh, for instance, for the magnetic charge P squared equals one. Uh, in fact, here it is. Yeah, it's m equals one, p squared equals two, actually. So, uh, yeah, so it is this. Uh, here there is the model of form. Uh, it's a very specific model of form. It's called uh, Horvitz Kronecker class numbers. Uh, it's a generator of that. Uh, so, at every level, when you do this decomposition, uh, I think you see these uh, encounter mock model of forms. And this was noticed by these authors. Uh, we have actually generalized this to, uh, to, uh, to the orbifolds. Uh, at the first level, just at the first level, these guys have gone much further ahead. And they have, I think, a general argument, but we don't have. Uh, we've just gone to the first level uh, and for all the orbifolds. And uh, in fact, here is an example uh, of that uh, decomposition. Um, uh, and here, yeah, so it's a generalization of that decomposition for the orbifolds. Uh, so you can see at the finite part, there is this uh, uh, mock model of form. Again, at the next level, yeah, this Kronika numbers, these work, okay. And uh, recently, I just spoke uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, they have been doing this for higher levels of magnetic charge. Uh, and they say that they have a general method and they have cross-checked with our expressions uh, earlier and then it's sort of uh, it, uh, it's checked. I mean, in the sense it agrees, but otherwise, it, yeah. So it agrees. Uh, with they have it'll come soon. I think he was saying that they, you put out soon. Yeah. No, no, this is just the first step to identify the single centered one. Because uh, uh, you know, yeah, once you have a single centered, then you extract them. Because for every single centered black hole there is hair or computation. That's like the zero model. Sorry, yeah. Yes, in the psi f there will be in the psi f this this finite or finite part there will be a hair which one has like zero modes there will be there will be something called a, like string oscillation which one has because this contains single center plan it contains only single center plan but uh, it yeah it has the zero modes which one has to get back. I'll tell you the hair. I, I, I won't go in so much detail. I'll tell you what the hairs are. Um, yeah. 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 So, uh, so we have done this decomposition. Uh, this is a mathematical exercise actually to do these decompositions for you know uh, for the orbifold cases. And uh, there is some uh, general argument. But what we have noticed is that there are these mock modular forms that are there. Uh, they play a role uh, soon, I'll tell you uh, soon. Uh, so now that we know how to extract a single centered black hole, which is which is basically in psi f, okay, uh, the Fourier expansions of these, uh, or we can do it by kinematic constraints. We can go about isolating the horizon, horizon and uh, degree of freedom by extracting out the hair. So, uh, so for that, we need actually to find the partition function of the hair in each of the cases, right? Uh, so, uh, so, and once we have that, we have to divide it up. That's it. Uh, so this, this head modes have been done earlier by these authors. Uh, they have constructed the, you know, the hair uh, for actually the maximally supersymmetric K, uh, maximally uh, canonical model, K3 cross T2 uh, model. Uh, they have done that. And uh, it involves looking at the dion a little bit more uh, carefully. Uh, so it involves uh, looking at the dion as a system of brains. And the fact that there is the down is placed in a top nut space, and that's how we go to four dimensions. And uh, and the top nut space is such that the geometry at the origin is is like R four, but at infinity it's like R three cross S one. Also, all these go as I show you. I mean, at least indicate uh, it's important actually. Uh, so it involves looking at the down a little bit more carefully, and the hair modes arise because of certain collective motions of the D one D five system. Uh, along the x5 and t directions, their oscillation. Uh, so you have to think of it as a string, and 
and and they are just oscillating around it around it the full oscillations and they are not the excitations in k3 actually so uh, there are excitations in the transverse directions and uh, and they can be shown actually these modes have been constructed by those authors uh, and they can uh, you can actually see where the modes are localized you can show that i mean from the function explicit form of the function one can show that, that they are localized outside the horizon uh, so there's just oscillations of this effective string and they are in one direction so that they preserve supersymmetry now here is a formula for the hair mode i mean degeneracy of the hair i mean the partition function of the hair modes and so essentially we have to factorize this out and there's a test they have done a test also uh, for this construction because you know in the, if people know the system very well there is a 4d 5d relation uh, to this uh, if you look at the near horizon geometry even in 4d the system is exactly like the 5d because uh, once you go near enough to the top this the top net space it's like r4 so this s1 doesn't play a role so uh, near near the geometry of the horizon uh, it looks like 5d so the hair the, the horizon degrees of freedom should match but the hair modes are different when you see it from 5d and 4d and but you can like uh, you can remove the hair modes and once you extract the you know uh, the horizon degrees of freedom uh, uh, from the 5d perspective as well as from the 4d perspective it should be the same and that check they have done actually the authors uh, uh, and so now the formula for this the horizon is this right and focusing on single center uh, so that's the formula uh, yeah, I guess that's what I mean. 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 Yeah, which frame you're looking at. Suppose you're looking at a particular type two frame, uh, the oscillation transfer of the and you're looking at the hypotic. Uh, yeah. But it's the weight of the cord, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the weight of five ten that you yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is just for the maximally supermetric case, but the other ones are slightly different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Maximal yeah. 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 yeah, ten, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 There is some. There's no frame where the there's no frame where the right. right. frame. Frame. No, there is no frame. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Initially, that was the assumption. There were some assumption that sometimes there's only one. There was okay. There were various stories to it, but yeah, there's no frame in which the hair is at. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay. Uh, they, they interpret this here from the sixth dimension of point of view, okay. and there are the brown anomalies of the area of three uh, near horizon. So they're basically the, the when they're pulling hair, it's like the boundary gravitas of the area of three. It could be because I mean, they come from this. Yeah. 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 Well, they do the same situation structure, right? Then in six dimension, and and they basically from the point of view of area three, the the large system uh, uh, Because this is a PD day. So so let me show like uh, basically in that paper they yeah. kind of uh, see that the homomorphisms of Brown and off, they do it to the PD way. Yeah, this is actually yeah, it could be the same because these are PD days. This uh, time Vachaspati. Uh, Trans transform. That's how we, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we have to do the two things, and uh, and the, these are the kinematic constraints uh, for single center. And uh, if you do it, uh, yeah, you see that these are the ones that violate the kinematic constraints, and you can see that uh, yeah, it's all positive, uh, and. Uh, uh, and for uh, for this uh, this canonical model, actually, for this particular configuration, we have a proof uh, using the uh, decomposition of uh, psi naught to psi f, right? Because that psi f gives you the full generating function for the uh, you know single centered black holes, and uh, you know we have an analytic proof for it. And that proof, actually, just to because it's a number theory meeting also, that proof uh, to show that it's positive, 
uh, involves the fact that we had this uh, horowitz kronecker class numbers uh, as the CIF, and it also involves certain bounds, number theoretic bounds, which are known uh, in these numbers. And that's how, and it's actually adaptation of the proof uh, of, uh, of Murthy and uh, Brinkman. Uh, they had done this without removing the hair modes, and we could show that they still remain positive with, uh, by removing the hair modes, because, yeah. 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 The fact that it's even positive is not removing the hair marks, but it suggests that there is a brain going there and over there. Yeah. yeah. Or is it the constant? Yeah, I don't know. See, you see the hair mark, it's actually upstairs like this, but it's minus sign the hair. So it just decreases with each other. So it can move with negative. Yeah. So it could be, I mean, yeah, you're saying that somehow because of the fact that it's positive, but you know, but it, the thing is that uh, I think the positivity conjecture is a little more rigid. It says that one, if we move all the hair more, then it should be positive. Um, so it's a little bit more restrictive than that. So when, because when you like here to remove the hair more, they are actually subtracting certain things. It's, it's upstairs. It's, it's, yeah. I don't, yeah, it's some thing. Huh? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's uh, oh, this is actually the kinematic constraints. This is not even area, it's q squared p squared minus q dot p. Yeah. Uh, so it's those other states, yeah, negative discriminant states. Yeah. So um um yeah, so uh, yeah, so what is it? Um fine, yeah, this is what I said. And uh uh yeah, the proof for what is p squared equals to. And that's the only decomposition we did. I mean, only for, for that. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, I don't know how, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think those are you, yeah. We, we, we can, uh, uh, so, of course, these things can be generalized uh, to other orbifolds recently. Recently, it's like I haven't worked on a few years, actually. But uh, yeah, in 2021, we generalized this uh, constructions for other all the other orbifolds, which we had explicit elliptic gene genera for. And uh, for the at least for the construction of the hair, uh, we agree. I mean, there was an agreement. Uh, we found an agreement uh, with the paper, which came a couple of weeks before uh, us. Uh, and, but we went a little further. We actually calculated uh, the positivity and showed it's positive. Uh, these are again not area. Uh, so for the positive positivity, well, three it's also positive. Um, yeah. So uh, so that's uh, let me just summarize. I think those are the two things, uh, three things I wanted to say. Uh, let me just summarize them. Uh, so uh, so the degeneracies. I think there are just three points. I mean, even if it's so technical, so it's just three points you have to take home. So uh, the degeneracies of quarter PPS states are. Fourier coefficients of this inverse Siegel model of forms. And uh, the construction of each of these Siegel model of forms involves a connection with uh, Matthew symmetry. Um, then uh, the large charge expansions of these degeneracies have geometric interpretation in terms of the area and the, uh, of the black hole and its subleading corrections. And showing this involves a saddle point approximation and a modular transform of the Siegel form. And uh, the simple fact that the black hole horizon is uh, spherically symmetric uh, led to a prediction that you know, uh, uh, Fourier coefficients related to certain model of forms are positive. Um, and this is, of course, yet to be uh, in, developed even further. Um, so, uh, so conclusions, and maybe I can just tell uh, generally that this presentation will hopefully convince you that this precision counting, there is an interesting connection between number theory and black holes. And uh, there are several open questions which we saw at the end of each of these sections, and uh, and it would certainly lead to better uh, understanding of the black holes and model of form. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, a little ten minutes early. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. So the. The Ziegel model forms 5k you defined for each conjugate class. 
yeah. uh, as a mod, uh, what has their modular groups? Ah, they are all. Oh, they, oh, yeah. It's actually given. It's not very easy to describe the subgroup of SPQZ, right? Yeah. There is a certain subgroup of SPQZ. So it's described in the paper. I mean, I can't immediately say the, like what the groups are. So there is a there is a form. Uh, I mean, of for that, for form every kind of class, yeah, the yeah, modular yeah, groups yeah, are yeah, known. Yeah, it is given subgroups of SPQZ. Just oh. like just like uh, the SN two Z becomes gamma zero n. Yeah. When you quotient it. The S two Z also becomes a very similar subgroup, and it's described in the paper. I mean, uh, so for uh, all of the twenty six yeah, yeah. class, yeah, there is a subgroup for S two S two Z under which it remains invariant. I see. That. Yeah. Okay. So the 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 saddle point approximation involves something which transforms it to something else. I see. In the general case, only in the five ten it remains invariant. I see. Thank you. But about what they also have a yeah, yeah. 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 so also counts hair. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. so I think was doing there the yeah. So it's identifying that the matching of microscopic and microscopic partition function has been done. No. It has not been investigated in <laughs> They do. they do the talking, but there is the matching and so on. But I don't know whether they address the hair. And... Oh, they don't. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. No, but I think maybe I believe just because of how it comes out, like in the solutions, uh, there might be an initial word supersymmetry if the hair preserves the right amount of supersymmetry just because it's important. But it, it, in, in the sense of like constructing the thinking way, this is very general. Yeah, it's very general. It's easier to see it if you uplift this. And for the 4 it's kind of difficult to see it, but if you uplift the solution, like, you will have it. Um, yeah. From the point of view, then, for the NCOA, well, the NCOA is the only solution. Yeah, the best thing is super symmetry. But I think it's super symmetry. Like, if in the NCOA case, for some reason, they don't contribute because they're not super symmetry. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's Okay, well. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, wait. The, yeah. You compute the hair modes in the type 2B frame? Has it been frame. computed in other frames? I don't know. Or only that? Only that. Yeah. Do you know if uh, I'm pretty sure it should be done, but do you know if there's going to be a calculation or check where this small body form is going to be where you can go to the public person so you will get like not uh, well, other something that's uh, more modular, let's we'll say, but more modular and smaller subgroup. Is there a more modular form which captures the I don't know the connection. I can show it here. Yeah, I'm not like you know, I think I'm not such an expert in and used it as a Other questions? If not, let's say Johnson. 